And we are back. And as promised, we have the topic, uh, Opportunities for Women in Tech, that we're discussing now as our first conversation of the day. I hope you were part of our small talk that we had with Sako, an interesting one. And now we move on. And uh, for this particular topic, we have an expert. She goes by the name Sherry Oyer. She is the Programs Officer, uh, Women's Digital Rights at Cake Tenant. Karibu sana, Sherry. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. And she's a young person, <laughs> <laughs> a woman in tech. She, you know, you fit in right into our topic yeah. today. Yeah. So um, when you talk about uh, opportunities for women in tech, why, why do you think we... Okay, I think I've just got, gotten straight into it. Maybe <laughs> you tell us Go what ahead. you do first yeah. at Kicktenet as yeah. a program officer yeah. and your role exactly. Okay. So, um, Kicktenet is an ICT policy think tank. Um, mm -hmm. So, we catalyze conversations and um, issues policy on is ICT issues. And our four working pillars are research, um, capacity building, policy advocacy, and uh, multi stakeholder engagement. So, basically, mm -hmm. just issues of ICT. And um, as a program, as a program officer in the Women Digital Rights um, Agenda um, program, mm -hmm. I l I lead that program in terms of ensuring that women in the digital space are protected. So we do a lot of research on issues online gender-based violence. We also agitate for changes in policy to ensure that women are because uh, you can just imagine how potent the digital space is and the opportunities that it presents. Mm -hmm. the, we also have a lot of challenges still, and there's still a gender gap there. So we are trying to bridge that gap through policy and through also just highlighting through our research the, the gaps that are there so that we can also now articulate what solutions are th uh, we, we need to come up with to just bridge that gender gap. Right. Yeah, yeah, amazing, and you sort of almost answered the question <laughs> I wanted to ask you. Yeah, but let me just ask you it again. Uh, when we talk about opportunities for women in technology, so what you know, what opportunities is this is when we talk about technology, the opportunities in technology, what opportunities are this? Yeah, so, um, as you can imagine, there's a lot of opportunities, and I think. Um, when we, when mm. COVID struck, mm -hmm. as much as we had so much problems at that time, also it just also just um, brought it to the for to the foresight that mm -hmm. there is a lot of opportunities and in, in technology, and um, the thing is. I don't want to ol only just talk about the, the very serious opportunities that we have, but also even in terms of entertainment, you have seen women also just joining um, online platforms, mm -hmm. for content creation, for instance. Mm. Those are opportunities that are still you're seeing. Yeah. You've literally seen people really grow in the content space mm -hmm. as well. But ad other than that, there's also, as much as most people, the conversation usually is very catastrophic that <laughs> that technology is going to take our jobs and all that. Mm -hmm. But technology is also pr presenting um, opportunities in terms of job creation. Mm -hmm. At this point, there's, there's a lot of space for a new talent, diversity as well. So from traditional um, roles like um, web developing to now cloud computing, mm -hmm. um, ethical hacking, those are now new roles that did not exist, let's say, 20, 30 years ago that, are now, are now, that now we now have. But other than even the employment and the entrepreneurial um, opportunities, there is also the opportunity for education. Mm -hmm. You've seen, and I think still when we go back, when you look at COVID still and, and, and what it catapulted, catapulted us to, that people um, were now more um, welcoming to the idea of online school and, and, even taking, and even taking smaller courses that are offered online. So you get that there's opportunity for edu education. There's even opportunity because the woman is, has most, carries most of the caregiving and the household chores, mm -hmm. the fact that now there's that opportunity for more flexible working environment. For instance, now you can work from home yeah. and, and those opportunities didn't exist before. So you can still have your role as a um, caregiver and a ha you maintaining a household that are traditionally <laughs> more women do that, mm -hmm. but you also still also are able to work because what you saw before was that sometimes women would have to fall out from, from their jobs because they had to take care of the at home. So that is still also giving that opportunity. Other opportunities, of okay. course, are issues like, for instance, healthcare now is mm -hmm. now 
diversified it's more digital it's more digitized and when you look at issues of privacy and sometimes people just want to be in the comfort of their homes and and get um health care for instance so those are some of the of the, of the opportunities that are like i'm seeing that are coming up and of course really on the issue of technology and work mm -hmm. and and the opportunities that are being presented like the diversity of it i don't want people to really focus on all oh, technology is going to take all of our jobs it's going to automate it's going to make it easier for instance mm -hmm. the the mundane tasks are going to be taken up by technology and we now have to diversify and reinvent ourselves mm -hmm. Mm. Yes. All right. I think that's uh, quite well put. And uh, you've just brought in the aspect that it's not just, when you're talking about opportunities, it's not, it's not just the jobs yes. that it presents, yeah. but even the education, yes. you know, you can, the accessibility of education through technology. It's the, how it isn't the burden for, for the woman, yeah. you know, you, as much as you are a stay-at-home mom, caregiver, you can still work, you yes. know, regardless. So it's that kind of opportunity that yeah. is presented yeah. for women in technology, mm -hmm. right? And uh, someone might wonder, because some people feel like we have really put the girl child <laughs> <laughs> up again. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's a there was a um, misbalance, mm -hmm. if I can put it like that, uh, for over a long time. But people feel like the girl child has already been empowered and now the boy child is being forgotten. So why do we need to continue this conversation of empowering the woman? Okay, so uh, something I also forgot to mention, like when we're looking, let's not look at it at very serious. Also mm -hmm. entertainment is also a good thing that technology mm -hmm. has brought for women. We are able uh -huh. to entertain ourselves. But onto your question on the gap, that the gender gap. I think um, there's a misconception that we really want to leave the boy child uh, behind mm. and all that. But when you look at even the SDG 5, that is the sustain sustainable goal number five, mm -hmm. is for that bridging of that gap. What uh, the intention, um, the ideal intention is to have all genders at par. So for, for a long time, women have struggled with the, the burdens of patriarchy misogyny all those mm -hmm. things and those things have pulled the woman behind there are barriers for instance even when you look at technology and in terms of even the uptake of women in terms of education there's still a gap there in uh, when and you have if you have the gap in education then it means even in employment and even in leadership in technology yeah, that that gap will still exist mm -hmm. but we what sdg5 is trying to do is to ensure that even that women are lifted up high and i think we all have a role as men and women we all have a role if there's any gap anywhere that you see even on the men's side then these are are we have a responsibility to also fill those gaps and also just ensure that even as the boy the boys children are coming up yeah. they also are also empowered the goal is to empower everyone and not to leave anyone behind i think that's usually some mm -hmm. some something that is usually missed there's no i think the the goal is the, the focus should not be on lifting up one one gender and leaving out the yeah. another one or or anything like that but just pulling each a, everyone together at the same time mm -hmm. yes okay there's some i just read this morning um i couldn't i didn't quite read all of it yes. but uh what she was saying is that investing in in women is the biggest uh, investment opportunity would yeah. you agree to this and how how so i totally agree um when you invest in a woman you invest you you uh, that's a good uh, that's a good um that's a good plan and and you are more likely to reap the benefits because i think women have that um it, it's innate in them to lift others up as mm. well when you you've heard of sayings like when you educate a woman you've educated a village and you've helped a, an entire village because i think the our 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 when you give us a seed, we'll give you a whole farm. Yeah, we right. always, <laughs> yeah, we'll always multiply. And I think um, because of those, and um, I mean, like, there are also men who will also do that. But still, I think empowering women at the end of the day, when you go back to, uh, to uh, uh, in the homestead, you see how women also are just trying to mm -hmm. really uplift their families. So that, that, that collectiveness and that village um, and ensuring that everyone is taken care of, I think we have that that innately in us and we try as much as possible. So I think mm -hmm. empowering a woman is very important because at the end of the day, we are in those families, we are in those societies okay. and it, it just, it has a ripple effect on everyone. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. All right. There's also, um, you know, the aspect, the perception have, do you think women have 
uh, embrace technology because there's this perception, you know, uh, when we look at STEM yeah. courses, yeah. For the longest time, it mm -hmm. has been regarded as that that's a man's thing, yeah. you know, that's too difficult yeah. for women. But we've seen initiatives that are trying to change that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that women are now, uh, they now have the knowledge that we can do this? Like, yeah. there's opportunities for us here. There, yeah. There's something that we need to do to, to harness this. Yeah, I like, I like that you asked that question and, and tying it back to when you're saying, when you're asking if the boy child is being left behind. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when you look at the work, um, the workforce in STEM, in technology, um, there's still a very big gap. F and what I was saying before is that from when you say, um, when you look at technology, it's looked at a very, it's looked as, as a very technical uh, field that, and and because of the patriarchy and mm. because of the of the belief systems and the societal barriers there's that belief that women can't do that it's too difficult you cannot do that and i'm sure you've heard of the phrase um tech bros mm -hmm. we don't you don't really hear about tech, tech <laughs> babes <laughs> or something <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah but be, but that also just goes to explain the fact that it is m it's a male dominated um it's a male dominated area mm -hmm. that women are trying to break into but also you'll have to understand the structural barriers that are there from the education from what the woman is told at home that you cannot do these things you are bad in math therefore you cannot do these things and what people also have to understand now is that tech the t in the stem mm -hmm. you really don't need to be a web developer which i mean having more women in those very technical roles is amazing mm -hmm. but there's still other 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 aspects that you can also get into i have a low background but i'm still still in in tech, in tech. i'm still a woman in tech mm -hmm. you know so we are getting this the, we are reinventing ourselves there's a diverse um there are diverse areas to also plug into mm -hmm. and as women as well and just um when i was talking about the education when you start from the education it's, it's too difficult and therefore yeah. that translates to less women doing um, technology um related courses or even mm -hmm. trying to get into that space when you look at the employment as well the employment um if there are less women doing it, then more le less women will be getting into employment. And even when you when they still get into employment, there is still leakage in that in that workforce pipeline because of the very difficult um, work environment. It's not very supportive. Mm -hmm. For instance, you will realize that in technology, the, there's um, there's a very high high value in working very long hours mm -hmm. and and that really does not support like for instance someone who has um who's supporting a family which is really roles that also still fall on the woman as well mm -hmm. so you'll find that and even there's a lot of also because it's very male dominated and because uh, unfortunately sometimes there's sexual harassment and all that that means that more women leave that workforce before they can even get into the higher levels and that also now means that there is less women at the top mm -hmm. and in terms of leadership because of those really st stringent work and um, work um, environments, there are really no there. We still do not have proper um, procedures of, of promotions and all that. So you seeing we still have a, we still have a very big gender gap in terms of employ in terms of education, in terms of employment, in terms of leadership. And when you say uh, when you talk about leadership, if you have women in those leadership roles, then they are able to articulate um, the needs of women. They're able mm -hmm. to articulate the challenges that women might be facing in these environments and therefore make life easier. But if you do not have someone who understands those things, then then those the, then the gender gap the gender gap still remains as it was before. So mm -hmm. I, we even at Kicksternet we really at, at we really advocate for for fairness in work in work in workplaces for um, equality even in in terms of um, in terms of the the spectrum of, of employees like yeah. have a, ge a, a, a gender balance, balance yes mm. okay yeah. Yeah. all right and you have mentioned some of the challenges but there's this one this particular one that women face mm -hmm. you know and it's online harassment yes. so because the opportunities that are there when we talk about tech you know and you've rightfully mentioned that it's not just about web developing yes. you know that there's some of the stem uh courses that it pre that presents and opportunities, but it's in the digital space, yes. right? So when you put yourself out there, let's say you're a content creator, mm -hmm. then you have put yourself out for cyberbullying, for yeah. harassment, yeah. and such a, s ki that kind of violence. So how do we as women deal with that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> have done. done? <laughs> um, so at Kick Narrative, th that is um, 
uh, the bane of our existence because we've done a lot of research on on issues of online gender based violence mm -hmm. and the prevalence it is that we have in Kenya so last year we did an uh, a research that did not only cover th that expanded outside of Nairobi because most of the research that had been done before was basically um focusing on Nairobi as the respondents because of course Nairobi again is where most people the, the the on the social media is a lot here but you also saw, saw that it was very prudent to do it outside Nairobi as well mm -hmm. and we got responses from a diversity of even even in terms of age in terms of age and what was fascinating about that research was that most of the men that we that we interviewed as well they their response was that, was that they had not experienced online gender based violence directly mm -hmm. but they had they had they knew of a woman who had experienced the wow. online gender based violence mm -hmm. and then of course um even when you look at the the demographics in the in the rural areas we realize that more women who are older uh, uh, above 40 years old experience online gender based violence more than the younger ones because wow. maybe they're the ones who are um they are presenting themselves for for political office mm -hmm. or maybe a, a a position in 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 leadership, in leadership for, for for instance and of course in the in the urban area we know very well that um the the the, the women who are more um on on the public platform politicians, human rights defenders, mm -hmm. um, the content creators, for instance, they experience a lot of online gender-based violence. And online gender-based violence, the, m the motive usually we found is other than, um, th than, than maybe to settle scores, also it is to just silence women so that they cannot use these spaces. Mm -hmm. And what we are doing at Kicktanet is also n not only um, revealing what the challenges are but you also really focus on the solutions so um so what are some of those solutions so some of the solutions <laughs> are that we are now really um we are with this uh, an, an ICT the ministry of um ICT and um, digital economies has a working group that is reviewing all mm -hmm. ICT laws at the moment. And what we are now also uh, agitating for is for the definition of this on of these forms of online gender-based violence. Remember that, for instance, our penal code that is the law that um, crim that um, defines what crimes are mm -hmm. was enacted a long time ago. Mm. The Kenya Information Communication Act was enacted in 1998. The uh, computer misuse and cyber crimes act was con was also um, enacted a long time ago so okay. th some of these offenses were not really defined in and they're coming up they're coming you can you can imagine even what ai is doing now with the manipulation of images for mm -hmm. instance those are not things that we were we foresaw when those when these laws were being enacted so we want those laws those those offenses to be defined because let's say for instance um in the penal code when you say um, um when you, when you when you define murder it has a very defi def definite definition and that prosecution has to um, tick all those all those um, those those uh, those um, those um, yes those those boxes before you can actually say that someone is going to be convicted. And so when we don't have these laws in the first instance, then we are not also able to really hold accountable the offenders. So what we are doing right now is you are really overstretching the laws that we have in existence right now to fit into these things. But you want now more more definite definitions for these things and also we also we also when we looked at when we did the research also we also realized that online gender based violence because it's not sometimes it's not it does not go into the physical realm mm -hmm. people really ignore the uh, the impact of it mm -hmm. but we th we have issues of psychological trauma there's depression there's suicidal ideation after after experiencing this um these offenses mm -hmm. and therefore we were all we also proposing for um psychosocial support for the victims as well other than a fine or um a compensation a monetary compensation we're also asking that Our we get psychosocial support mm -hmm. yeah and also more importantly let's say for instance a content creator is run out of their social media and now they cannot make money then you're also asking for compensation for them for the period of time that they had to leave social media but also at kicktanet we really are we really ha we really advocate for digital resilience we have a course on um on a on a platform called a tingi that all just teaches women digital resilience because online gender based violence intends to run women out of social media and and technology platforms to t silence them but um with digital resilience you can learn how to even overcome those things and still stay on these platforms because of the opportunities that it presents okay yes so when you talk about uh, digital resilience how do you 
how do you overcome it? You know, you've received this, um, you know, um, very insensitive uh, comments yeah. on your page from a photo that you've posted yeah. saying something. So how do you, and it's not just that, it's a series of many other things that have happened. So how do you, you know, be resilient? Yeah. So, so we, when you look at the cause that a very good cause that I would I would uh, re, I would recommend for any woman to just it's a very short cause. Mm -hmm. um, you can really learn a lot. It's on our platform called Atingi. But what we what what we advocate for first is, you know, sometimes people don't even recognize that they are being um, harassed on on social media yeah. because let's say on some sites we now have normalized it's it's called banter mm -hmm. you really don't know that you're being harassed on those so so the first step is actually understanding that this is actually harassment or this is a particular offense then now you know what to do and then also of course we in in that course we also really advocate for that um taking time off for for like just um understanding what is happening mm -hmm. and then um, maybe having like um, support from other people as well and also now the reporting mechanisms mm. what most people don't understand even people who use a lot of this of these platforms social media platforms that there are already embedded um, reporting mechanisms on that pl on those platforms so we teach you how to use that pla those, those as a first port of call that you use the platforms reporting mechanisms and where it does not sometimes um, there's no um, there's no response or there's no um, there's no action that is taken if there's if that's the case mm -hmm. you can escalate it to even reporting it to the police for instance mm -hmm. and also uh, following up on issues of prosecution as well. So yeah. those are the forms of digital platforms for, for the digital resilience, just ensuring that you are, and also- You're aware. Oh, yeah, and you're you aware, and also even even in digital resilience, we also teach you how to ensure that you are practicing cyber hygiene in terms of you do not post your lo lo your location when we are there, when you're at that at that particular place. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't, um, you don't maybe post about like, um, personal things that would also be used against you, for instance. Mm -hmm. So, um, if if you, you like, you can't you can't really post about like your your location at home. Like this is where I live. People will know where you're living. Yep, and yeah, people will track yeah, you. People will home. track you. People will dox you, for instance. You are seeing more e cases of doxing now, where people just share people's numbers. Mm -hmm. For instance, you don't post a receipt that has your number. That is you you placing yourself. You're really yeah. exposing yourself to this risk. So these are the things that we are we we call digital. When you when you take them wholesomely, wholesomely, you can practice digital resilience. Okay, yes. so digital resilience uh, and it has uh, good cyber hygiene yes. practices yeah. in it. Just how you should carry yourself. You just basically you put out what you want people to exactly. see and not your yeah. personal information yeah, yeah. Yeah. you limit how much someone can know about you and i yeah. think that's very important yeah. especially for you know for women in these spaces for women in media for women in leadership for women in content creation mm -hmm. as long as you are in this space the digital space then you need to be safe as you operate uh, on this platform so as we come to a close on this particular conversation yeah. we have spoken on so many things but if you were to talk to um, a woman out there and just to challenge them to take up opportunities that are there, uh, you know, in technology, then what would you be telling them? And you can even look yeah. them <laughs> into the camera. Yeah, um, I think, I think um, my, my message would be that there's a lot of opportunities for women in technology and um, technology right now, there's a lot of demand for diverse skills and and talent as well so reinventing ourselves not not really fearing that technology is taking our jobs and mm -hmm. all that reinventing ourselves and and just ensuring that you are ahead of the curve you are taking opportunities um and they and, and again with even technology there's a lot of opportunities for education and also upskilling ourselves mm -hmm. that we can take up so the small causes i mean sometimes you cannot we may not be able to afford like a an expensive master's degree or an even a degree in the first place mm -hmm. but there are a lot of opportunities in terms of the the, the, the platforms are many of, of just doing small courses and 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 upskilling yourself even if you already have like you're already in a profession you can still also still upskill yourself in terms of just getting a diversity of skills and and then and then um prospering in in the end and of course um if you follow kicktonet's work Mm -hmm. um on on all our platforms it's a uh, kick it kick it is k i c 
TA net so you can you can just follow our, all our work and you can see what is happening around issues of ICT and technology and if you're a woman you also can follow uh, you can also go on our website and look at the gender program you can see a lot of things that you're doing and to inspire you and to get ahead of the curve as well mm -hmm. yeah I love it so thank you very much Sherry. Thank you, <laughs> we hope to have you uh, some other time to I, talk I'm about I, I, I'll appreciate that different I, topic. I look forward to it all right yes. Thank you. So that has been Sherry Oyer. She's the Programs Officer, uh, Women's Digital Rights at Kicktonet, talking to us about opportunities for women in technology. And this is amazing because it's not just the job opportunities that are presented with this space. You know, it's the education that you can access online at your convenience if, you know, you have so many things. Or if you can't even afford to go to school, you know. You can get the short courses. You can be walk, you know, through the, um, the 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 small things, the courses like what Kicktonet is, you know, is presenting to to us. So you take advantage of this particular opportunity that we have. And we had this conversation because we are still celebrating uh, the Women's Day and it stands for the whole month. So we'll be having such amazing conversations. Thank you for staying with us throughout uh, this particular discussion. Brand Sakwa is coming up with the next conversation. So stick with us.